And we are live. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. We are talking all about flash photography, something you may have noticed that I'm slightly passionate about since I have a whole playlist here on YouTube dedicated to it. This will be interactive. I do not want to talk at you. I want to talk with you. So make sure that you hang out in the chat. I've got my chat up here so that I can talk to you. And if you're following me around uh, social media today on Instagram, Clubhouse, Facebook, you probably have noticed that I've been obsessively talking about flash photography today. And there's a reason for that. There is a reason for that. And I'll let you know in a second. First, sorry for the thumbnail where I had my curlers in. I actually had my curlers in for you, but by the time I took them out, my hair is now like a rat's nest and uh, catching on the mic, sorry. Okay, uh, so not as curly as I wanted, but I swear I was doing it for you guys. Anyway, so you've seen me talking about flash photography. Hey, Kilo, how you doing? Trenton, what's going on? Tommy from PA on my side of the country and Ronald. Yeah, where are the clip curly things? Exactly, yeah, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I took them out and didn't end up really with curly hair at all. It's pretty gloomy out. So why have I been talking about flash photography? Why are you seeing so much about this? The reason is we are launching my flash photography lighting guides today. Now, you may have seen a video about this because I did put that on YouTube first thing this morning. If you're on my email list, you got an email at 10 a.m. right around the same time. And the, oh, there's nothing else like this. This tech is just not available in the photo world yet. So this is the first time you're seeing it. And every time I try to go explaining it, I don't do a great job because it's like Google meets YouTube meets OnlyFans slash Cameo. And you put it all together, bundle it with a topical photography topic. And, uh, and that's what you've got. So these three guides, essentially what I'm releasing are three guides. You know, let me share my screen. <laughs> I'm going to show you the back end. All right. We got this. Make sure we share sound. Make sure we do this. Okay. So here we are. So I'm going to share my screen with you. I'm going to go to the part of the screen where I am sharing this and uh, find it. There we are. We've got three guides. Now I'm releasing these three guides. What these three guides are together. They're almost seven hours of photography education on flash photography. I did break it up for you. So you've got beginner, you've got off camera flash basics, and then a little bit more advanced tips and tricks, but the, oh, there are no words. Okay. Let's go with, let's go with the beginner's flash guide. So, uh, let Sony or Canon whose channel are you on? All right. So this is a beginner's flash photography guide. And what you would expect you have, you have this like, you know, little list and it's nice and organized and we've got subcategories and, you know, you can always go to whatever shooting on a sunny day. And then we've got that, um, you know, we've got a mix of videos in here, right? There we go. I hope I have this kind of turned down. Okay. Yeah, I do. Um, so we've got videos here. Now these videos, let's just start here. These videos, not only do we have closed captioning for different languages, but we have audio in different languages. I will turn up the volume here because you can listen to me teach. Me encanta que elegí llevar mi Canon EOS R5 porque sabía que haría un gran trabajo fotografiando en How realmente. amazing is that? Or Portuguese. And we're working on adding more and more languages. So for all of my Brazilian friends, Portuguese friends. Queremos que isso vá um pouco além de você. Então, se você der um passo para trás. We've got you covered, all right? Now, the cool thing about this is, let me just take this a little bit different. Let's just say you didn't go into the guide. This is where this actually makes crazy sense, ready? You go into this press microphone and you could voice dictate if you want to, but I'll just go, um, I don't know, how to bounce. No, I should learn how to spell. How to bounce flash. It's gonna search for me and it's going to search all of the video files as well as articles that I have in here. I'm gonna mute, uh, mute these so you're not trying to listen to this too. So not only did it end up in the the bounce flash video, but it started, look where it started, 29 seconds where I actually started talking about bounce flash versus you watching the intro, right? It gets better. Click on transcript right here. 
And this is the entire thing written out. So maybe you're like, okay, this is great. I want to know how to control the flash. Yeah, that's what I wanted. And you skim down here versus skimming down in the video and having to wait for the audio and thinking you stopped at the right spot. You can just click and it goes to where that point is in the video. Or you scroll down, you keep going. How about where she set her ISO? Oh, look there, she said ISO. ISO, whatever you want to say. Click there and it's now in that part of the video. You can see right there where we are talking about the settings and the ISO settings. Crazy, crazy, right? It gets better. You have a question about this stuff, you can click here and you can go to direct messages and send me a direct message. Now the direct message is a premium. In fact, it's actually more expensive than these guides are, but that's where you're getting access to me, me being able to answer your questions right there. It's kind of like super chat or YouTube. It's like super chat. That's what it is, except, except, you can send me video files here. For example, I just had someone send me this morning a video file of their, their camera having an error and they could actually show me the error that their camera was having. And it was an icon, so I didn't really help. <laughs> but uh, you could send me images to critique. You could show me an image that you took and you don't know what went wrong. And then explain to me in a video, you know, what it was that you, you did and your question. And then instead of me just typing you back, I can send you back a video of me answering your question or an audio or a text. So these guides are just, it's crazy. There's three different ones uh, that I have here, just depending on where you are. Or of course, the link is in the description to this video. If you're just signing on, this is why we're talking about flash so much. So we're getting through this and then we're going to get into it. Um, we've got a bundle going on right now. Uh, for instead of the $9.99 for each guide individually, you've got the bundle for $19.98. However, please hold. So I'm getting text updates. This is only for the first 500 people. And the last text update I got, there are five of those left. So we've already sold 99 or 95 of these. So there are only five five of those left at that 1998 for all three lighting guides, seven hours of searchable content. It's crazy. Plus other languages, plus audio plus it, and the direct messaging feature. It's fantastic because truthfully, you know, if I'm going to be really honest with you guys, I try really hard. I try really hard to answer all my comments, but something's got to give at some point. Currently there are probably about a thousand unread messages in my Instagram DMs. I try to keep up with them and I just can't. So I had to create a new avenue where I can be there for you guys as much as I can. And that's what this is doing. In addition to, oh my gosh, chat, um, in addition to doing Q and A's like these. So that's why we're talking about flash photography. Grab the link in the description below. It's the first link up there. You can see more about what it is. And of course my YouTube video earlier today was all the, uh, all the promo stuff. Okay. Hey, what's going on, Vlad? Cody, perfect. But, aw, thanks, Jack. Pretty scroll on the web. So nice. Greetings, Wayne from Middletown, Virginia. And I'll get to some of these questions here. Yeah, don't worry. Uh, I know there's only Spanish and Portuguese there now. More translations are coming. Uh, yes, we do want Swedish at some time, Thomas. Okay. Can you get the bundle? Yes, Pat, you can get the bundle. There are only five left at that special 1998 price. It is going to go up to 24, which is still five bucks off of already a very inexpensive product, but you can grab that in the link below. You'll still get a special bundle deal after we hit 100. Can you hire me to answer all the comments? Little boots. Uh, yes, that'd be awesome. <laughs> all right, Kilo, let's start talking about flash photography. So Kilo's talking about, I've never used flash, but I am thinking, am I saying your name right? I'm so sorry, Kylo, Kilo. I've never used flash, but I'm thinking of adding the 600 EX for my wildlife and hoping to learn something today. Whew, okay, wildlife, I have to admit, is the absolute last thing I shoot. However, I do know about that Canon 600 EX2 flash. It is a great flash, but I do have to say, if I were recommending a flash, a Canon flash these days, it would be the EL1. They more recently came out with it. It is more expensive, but it's running on lithium batteries, which means your recycle time is going to be a lot faster. It's a little bit 
I think it's a little bit more powerful, but the recycle time is key. Plus you're not like hoarding AA batteries or charging a bazillion AA batteries. Uh, you've just got one nice lithium battery. Um, but the 600s are still great. It is a lower price point. And the nice thing about that, if you're shooting wildlife, I imagine your flash is going to be off camera. So you want to have either another, you know, 600 EX2 on your your uh, camera so that it can trigger or one of the Canon triggers so you can control the flash. Maybe when you mount it to a, you ever seen the Lasto light? They're called Lasto light cold shoe spring clamps. Lasto light cold shoe spring clamps. You could like mount them in a tree and you know, wherever you want that light to be in relation to what you were photographing wildlife wise. So that would be very cool. Uh, and even the same, but I'll be using it for my weddings. Yes, that is definitely where my forte is, is weddings. And I do have a wedding tomorrow, photographing in Jersey City. And one of the things I'm doing with my EL1s, as well as my Profoto A1Xs, I mess around a little bit. Uh, I am using that clamp and I'm going to want to clamp. I've got two of them. I'm going to clamp them different spots uh, to get some really dynamic lighting in the reception, especially since the reception where we're photographing has really dark walls. So I'm not going to be able to rely on that bounce flash. Actually, mm -hmm. if you want to see how I photograph with dark walls, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again. Clickety click. All right, let's go ahead into do from the library. I want to say, I think it's in this guide off camera flash basics. And I want to learn how to light a dark room because that's always one thing we have to do. Sometimes you just can't, can't bounce flash. And I like to bounce flash. How to start using off camera flash. Oh, here we go. Related results, how to light a dark room. There it is. Right here, there is my video all about how to light a dark room. And again, you go down to this transcript scroll through, see what I'm talking, talking, equipment used to shoot a ballroom. Now I already got my own equipment, don't need that. What are grids? I know what grids are. Oh, putting the lights on the same side of the room. Click, that's what I wanna know. Jumps me to 246 and now I can just look at what I wanna know about lighting on the lights on the same side of the room. Or I scroll down and I keep going. I don't wanna know that. How about lights on the opposite side of the room? Yep, click there. Now we jump forward to 754. And I'm going to talk about my setup for lights on the other side of the room, opposite sides of the room. So this is what I'll be me messing with, but I won't have these light stands that you see me holding right there. I'll have the, uh, the last light like, clamp. So that's pretty freaking cool, right? You're done. You don't have to skim through. What was this? Uh, 11 minute video. You, you know, you don't waste 11 minutes of your time. You just used 30 seconds or less and found exactly what you needed. That's why these guides are so crazy powerful. Oh, I just love it. Just need all of YouTube to do this. Okay, let me go to some of these other questions. Kylo, anything different between DSLRs and mirrorless for flash? I'm using the R5 and R6 now. So yes, uh, and the reason I say yes is cosmetic. I'll say. So when you're shooting off camera flash or flash with a DSLR, your viewfinder is still optical. So you're just seeing, you know, a mirrored reflection of what's happening in front of you. But when you're shooting with mirrorless, you don't have that. You have the flash and you're in a dark room. And what happens when you're in a dark room? The EVF is going to brighten up the electronic view of the room. So it almost, depending how dark it is, becomes kind of laggy and slow looking. Something to get used to. It's certainly not the end of the world and nothing to necessarily complain about, but that's the biggest difference. Uh, and for that reason, I actually tend to like to shoot with my DSLR in my studio. Uh, that's a really, really good question. All right, let me get back here. I keep having to go up right there. Hey, the Brazilian fans. Yep. Got to have all my Brazilian fans in there. Hey, from Monmouth County. Hey, Sandra, you're right in my backyard. That's where I'm from, Monmouth County. That's where I am right now. Um, I'm not in Texas, Sandra. I am still in uh, Monmouth County, New Jersey. So we are moving to Texas at the end of the year. We're waiting for a house to be built. It's exciting. 
slash really, really, really scary. Hey records, how are you doing? Is this interactive platform based on the flash photography book? That's a question. So if you guys are familiar, I did write an entire book on flash photography, giving you 32 scenarios setting up your flash. Really simple, really easy to use, going from beginner to advanced techniques, but just really digestible, um, tangible information. This is not based off that. Uh, no, <laughs> not at all, actually. Um, diff just different content. That's all it comes down to is just different content. Uh, Jay Brown, you said you don't see the link. You just uh, click in the description of this video. You got to move the live chat over and get to the description. Uh, Hamad, are the Godox AD300 Pro and the AD100 Pro worth being a startup strobe to learn to use them before jumping to more expensive ones like Profoto. You know, it's funny. I get this question all the time. It, and by question, I mean a lot of heat and slack for using pro photos. Here's my thought process. And I have this thought process whether someone's asking me what lens to use, what camera to use, their beginner. My question is always, where do you end up, where do you want to go, right? Where do you want to end up being? Because by how you phrase that, you know, learn before jumping to more expensive ones like Profoto. So in my head, that's telling me that you want to end up at Profoto. So if you want to end up at Profoto, I wouldn't start you on a completely different line, right? As the same as if you were asking me what a beginner camera was uh, and you wanted to be a professional photographer one day, then I would tell you to start going to like full frame mirrorless, maybe getting a, an R, which I'm recording this on right now, a Canon R. But if you weren't going to be a professional photographer, then I'd be like, you know, go for the M50 Mark II because, you know, you're not going to go down the line of professional. That's an awesome camera for you. So it always depends on where you want to go because you don't want to change systems. And then that costs you way more money changing. So what I tell people to do, go find older pro photo gear, use gear. It's incredibly equipment. So use gear is awesome. The studio lights that I have downstairs in my studio, pro photo D ones, I bought them used and the guy had them for like 10 years and I've had them for the past three, never, never broken. All right. So I personally would go find an older pro photo a one. It's not as inexpensive as a Godox for sure, but you're going to end up in the trajectory of where you want to end up being versus if you bought an A1X or an A10. Yes, those are more expensive. Just buy used a few models back and they're still good and they're going to get you on the tracks where you want to be. So that's what I always tell people. Think of in the future, think of where you'll end up being transitioning. And of course, if you like Godox, you're going to end up using Godox and you're going to use Godox and then start there and go down that trajectory. Uh, cool. I have, oh, by the way, you guys, you see Kylie, uh, Patton, who is in the chat. She's one of the people behind retrieve, which is the technology that is used to make these lighting guides. It's crazy tech, but she can help you out with those questions right there. And they will help you out with that. Okay. Where are we? And do you, do you for, I just bought it and go now and go new confirmation. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Oh, got no confirmation. So you can uh, go ahead and message Kylie. She will help you out. You already did that. I'm behind, clearly. Um, what is a topic that people are always asking about that you included in the guides? That is an awesome question. Um, hmm. You know what the biggest thing is? How to balance ambient light with natural light with flash. That's one of the biggest questions. So let me actually go ahead and share my screen with you again, right there. I'm going to get to that screen. Sorry, a lot of finagling around. Let's get off here. I want to say it's probably in off camera flash basics. So let's just search natural light. The nice thing too, is when you go to search here, one, it's really stinking fast. Oh, there you go. Natural light. So this is lighting and weddings for portraits when working with natural light. And again, look how it jumped us past my little intro. Talk about natural light. So natural looking expression, we're talking about that. But here's the thing. So I just searched natural light. I didn't really know where I wanted to go with it. What was in here? I scroll down, adding a speed light, related results, adding a speed light to create soft light, lighting modifiers, light position lights and flashes. And it's gonna give me different things that I can look at that are related. And again, the transcript for me, that's just the most powerful. 
So that's one of the big things that you will see. And you sort of see that scattered around all three guides. Just kind of like want the bundle. It does give you all of this in here. So if I go to, let's go to advanced off camera tricks. Let me go into the guide here. Because of course you can scroll through here. You've got the colored gels and fog and softbox and headshots, moody lights. You have some people uh, making appearances here um making a dark day look sunny that's a good one right there high speed sync explained so those are some of the things there it is i knew there was one here indoor portrait balancing flash and natural light there it is <laughs> i knew it was somewhere in here i could have just searched you know it's so funny this is new tech and then here i am like using old tech scrolling through when i could have just searched natural light and had this come up because that's the power of these guides. Let's try that again. So natural light and balancing it with flash is one of the biggest questions that I get. And of course that is addressed in here multiple, multiple times over and over and over again. So you'll see that indoor portrait. There we go. And then we end up right here. Settings for shooting in the shade, eye tracking. We talk about some of the gear here, shooting from higher angles, weight, settings for shooting in the sun. So we got it all here so much stuff and it's so nice just to be able to go through this and you can click on anything in here uh exposing the subject when the background is bright and then it just jumps me to that part of the video where we start doing that so really really phenomenal technology bouncing light off walls bouncing from behind you and then here i know bouncing from an angle of the reflector because i talk about a lot of different ways to balance that natural light you have a lot of options as a photographer to do that Okay, uh, Clay, oh, let's go up. You guys are talkative today. All right, Jay Brun, you can talk to Kylie also. It looks like you're already talking. Hey, Dulepper, just bought it and love it. Thank you for all you do for the new lighting videos. Thank you, that means a lot to me. I do work hard over here, I try. And it's funny, as I was talking to you and talking to different people on Clubhouse today and on Instagram, I'm getting all these ideas for what I wanna do. You know what I wanna do? And you guys can tell me if this is a good idea. I wanna do a lighting video where I have an inexperienced flash photography, photographer, inexperienced photographer, <laughs> and I want them to set up their shot and, it's going to be kind of off because they're inexperienced. And then I want to take their camera from them with the settings and light settings that they did and show you how I slowly step from Ugh, that's not what I wanted to getting to the shot that I wanted. Is that interesting? Because I always tell people, you know, with flash, things can get convoluted. You know, you want to be able to um, do one thing at a time whenever you're changing settings so you don't get lost. But I figure, would that be interesting to have the inexperienced photographer do all the settings trying to get the shots she wants and then hand it over to me and me walk through that process of okay i know i want the background brighter so i'm going to do this i know i want the flash not as bright so then i do that and i do each thing one at a time and take what she did and show her how to walk to where she wants to go is that interesting i volunteer <laughs> okay that would be an amazing video fantastic Love that. Good. <laughs> do I need an assistant tomorrow in Jersey City? I do have my assistant and second photographer and third shot, third photographer, and then my husband also there. <laughs> so we're good. But thank you. It's really sweet. Just got it. Thanks for the tips on the newer flash. Didn't know that was out. Absolutely. Kylo, please tell me how I'm saying your name right. Got the bundle. Fantastic. Oh, and I haven't checked to see if we are all sold out. Yep, we are all sold out of that. We've officially sold our first 100. The 100. Focus, not on my face. No, oh, I'm too close to the camera. It says 100. I'm just going to stop doing that. Um, so we sold our first 100. So now we have a new deal for you guys. There is still a bundle deal. You still can grab it. All three of these lighting guides for less than $9.99 each is what that comes to. I think it's like seven bucks each. So awesome. Okay, let's keep going down here. Aaron Keys, thank you for doing this. What tips do you have to avoid those hot spots on the face or forehead? Seems like no matter what the modifier, I get the hot spots, which can't be removed. Okay, this is a good one. I'm gonna adjust my position here. So hot spots. Um, you ironically don't see any on my face right now. I was gonna try to help you out with that. Um, so the hot spots, yes, diffusers help because when you put diffusers in front of the light, it disperses-ish the light. That is helpful. 
but also, ooh. oh, there's a few ways to do this. Start off with the skincare, because if somebody has oily skin, it's going to show up shiny anyway. So if you can keep those little blue uh, oil absorbing sheets in your photography kit, that's going to save you an armor light. Second, if you have the light really close to your subject, uh, let's just say I have the light kind of here-ish and it's really close, your fall off is going to be pretty fast. So if it's hitting the forehead first, that's going to be the brightest spot. And then it's slowly going to get kind of darker. So if you adjust your light, so it's not at that kind of angle where this is the first thing the light hits and you flatten it out a little bit, that might help. And then also that will help. And then also the other thing to consider is light um, hits your subject and then comes back at an equal angle because light is like playing pool. So let's just say this is my subject. Light comes on like this, it bounces off at an equal uh, but opposite angle, right? So if you have a light that's like hitting, <laughs> okay, let's say your camera's like right here uh, and your light is hitting at an angle this way and bouncing back directly into your camera, that will kind of also exasperate the shine because like you're hitting the shine at just the right angle to exasperate it. Um, so try all of those things. Prevention, uh, ounce of prevention is worth a, worth a pound of cure with those oil absorbing sheets, of course. And then, you know, all of those things about the angles and how far away the light is, that's good. And if all else fails, uh, there are some Photoshop tricks actually, which lately I have seen on Adorama's YouTube channel. David Bergman had a great video on avoiding shine. So that would be helpful. Okay, let me go. I hope that was helpful, Erin. Uh, Mike, it's nice that the search isn't all of YouTube and the results are only your videos. Yes, that's that's the idea. And it's not just a searching for the video, it's searching and it will hit you in the exact pinpoint of that video where I start talking about that thing. And then showing you the transcript of the video that you can click on and skim versus skimming through a video, you can just skim through the visual words. Yeah, that made sense. Okay, Jack Rosenbaum got the bundle, but I'll keep getting sucked into these pesky live YouTube videos preventing me from starting on my journey into OCM. <laughs> this counts as your journey. We called it flash photography. <laughs> Uh, Jack, can we access these videos offline? You do have to be in a web browser for now. That's all I know for now. All right, cool. Yes, I love all you guys for the great video. Aaron, you could use Jared Pollan as your inexperienced photographer. Hey, he beat me on that last challenge. By the way, uh, next week, my video coming out on Tuesday at 9.45 a.m. That is the next budget photography gear shootout episode. I have it with Robert Hall uh, and it's a good one. I'm really, really happy with what we got out of that. And we're using, he was using Godot flashes. Uh, I'm using an EL100, which is like little $129 Canon flash. Really cool. Um, is it possible to add updates to this bundle as a paid feature? So the paid feature for the bundle, I'm gonna share my screen again. The paid feature on here is the direct messaging. So I don't know if we're going to, I have to check with uh, Retrieve, the people who made this, uh, if I can add to it. It tends to be too much information at once, but the upgrade is being able to contact me directly. And that's where you just come right here. You hit direct message and you can send me a video. You can type to me, you can send me an audio and I will send you a video back or an audio or text and I can critique an image of yours. I can answer any questions that you have, specific ones. You can show me what the heck is going on and what you're confused about. Uh, or we can just, you know, shoot the poo. <laughs> so that's what I would say. That's the, uh, the only fan slash cameo part of these guides. That's just crazy cool. Crazy cool. I'm just going to go back to library because I know it's pretty. Uh, no problem. Inexperienced photographers rule. Yes, they do. MJ. Hey, MJ. You're welcome. Um, Celia, you have so much knowledge about subjects business, marketing, sales photography. I'm just curious what and how you studied. Oh, I have five college degrees. I studied a lot, but I learned the most when I 
worked for another photographer for about five years before starting my own business. That's where I learned the business side of things there. And of course I went to conferences and did some creative live and learned other stuff that way too. I also was an intern at a lawn doctor. If you know the green thumb people, I was in their marketing department at their corporate headquarters. So I learned a lot of marketing that way, but a lot of it just experience and those five college degrees, though I have to say, I don't think those five degrees really did me much of anything. Uh, I mean, what photography, uh, Spanish education, I used to be a Spanish teacher. <laughs> um, what else? Social sciences and music. Those are my five degrees. Thank you. Great tips. Oh, oh good. Glad that helped, Aaron. Uh, Thomas, what's the one question that people never ask that you feel they really should in photography? Um, hmm. You know, I'm going to generalize this a little bit. People really need to ask and watch more about business because if you're just doing photography as a hobby, I hope you have a really good day job because it can be an expensive hobby. And most people don't want to learn the business of photography. Maybe I'll make another guide on that. But the business of photography is like you. The successful photographers, the most successful photographers I know are not the best photographers. They're not monetarily successful, I'll say. They're the ones that know how to run a business, that know how to run a team, that know how to do their taxes and their finances, and they know how to market themselves and create a good client experience. Those are the successful photographers. But when I put out a course on that or a video here on YouTube on that, nobody wants to watch it. And those are the questions you should be asking that no, most people aren't listening to the answers to. So that's what I would say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Going down your questions, Jim. Hey, Vanessa, what are the key differences between the three different guides? Well, Jim, the three different guides have completely different content in them. Completely different. There's nothing repeated. Um, so the basic differences, we just tried to group them in a way that was really good for a beginner, just beginner's guide to flash photography. It has on-camera flash as well as off-camera flash in there. Then we've got it really looking more about off-camera flash and getting into that more heavily, some basic, some a little bit more tricky. And then we've got the third guide, which is really just advanced. It has more about gels and grids and flashing yourself, which is a really fun technique. So we try to do it on levels like that, but there's such good information in there. Most people are getting all three. I think it was like 98% of people were getting all three guides because then you just have all the information. You're talking about $9.99 per guide. And now this bundle at $24.97 for all of them, it's hopefully a no-brainer. That's what I wanted. We wanted this to be a no-brainer purchase. I wanted it to be accessible to everyone. I didn't want it to be something where it's like, great, that's awesome. If I had $300, you don't need to have $300. Um, ask Dave Berman, yes, second best Adorama host. <laughs> um, Monzon Media question, do you favor strobes versus continuous lighting in certain situations? I prefer strobes because strobes give me more power. So therefore I have more freedom to do what I want. Continuous lights only have so much power coming out. They can only get so bright while the picture is being taken. Well, they're on all the time, but strobes are brighter. So it gives me more control. Now I do like using continuous lights sometimes um, when I'm shooting video, obviously, but every once in a while, I just want like a little tiny bit of light, not like the power of a strobe, which is why I like, uh, flashes that have a modeling light, like the Canon EL1 that has a modeling light on it, the Profoto A1X, the Profoto B10s that I use. Those all have modeling lights. The B10s uh, is color temperature adjustable. So those are really cool. I do like those for modeling lights. <laughs> yes, Sandra, the law of reflection. Exactly. Uh, Haman, not a flash question. I love your videos for Fundy. Awesome. Wondering how about photo mechanic? How can I use them to catalog my work without having pro the programs messing the images? So I use photo mechanic, but I'm only using it for culling. I'm not using it for really heavy cataloging. I am not the person to ask about that. I will be very honest, by the way, when I just am not the best person to ask about these things. All right. What time is it? Oh my gosh, we've been going for like 40 minutes already. Uh, OC6 Hookie, do you find that high speed sync outdoors in daylight is worth the trouble for full length portraits? 
you know, that just depends on your style of photography. So I'm going to go ahead. I want to say this is in advanced photography tricks, high speed, oops, high speed sync. We're talking about high speed syncs. I know I have videos on this. Yep. High speed sync explained related results using high speed sync equipment for high speed sync. Well, let's just go here because I know. Yeah, let's just go to the transcript. Perfect. No, oh, it says it right here. <laughs> high speed sync going to be the type of lighting equipment that you have. And now I can go all the way down to F2 2.0, I said, uh, on my aperture, which means that I have to go higher on my shutter speed, which is what I'm saying right now, higher than your camera shutter sync speed. So I'm all the way up at 1600 on my shutter speed. Now, advances to high speed sync. Um, and again, you could like read this. I naturally just start reading something, but of course you click on it and it goes right here. I'll turn up my volume for this. Speed is up at 1600 and that's the advantage. Or shooting you could of course click and have me speak Spanish to you instead. La imagen se ve porque cambia la profundidad de campo. No querrás quedarte atrapado sin poder ir a una profundidad superficial de campo. Anyway, the answer to your question is it doesn't matter about being a full length photo or a close up. If you want to have the high speed sync functionality, usually when you're outdoors, especially is because you want to have the blurred background. So whether that's a close up like I have here or a full length, it's still going to give you the blurred background, the, the look that you're going for. That's usually why people want to use it. So uh, the answer is yes, because my style is a little bit more um, dreamy, whimsical. So I want to have that blurred background, shallow depth of field effect. If I want to use flash with that outdoors, usually that means I need my shutter speed way up because my ISO is all the way down at 100 or 50 sometimes, and I've got nowhere else to go. So I need to have high speed sync. So yes, it's totally worth it. Wow, your college studies are impressive. Thanks. The Faustian man, I have my own photography business and I already made $10 this year soon, I'll be worth half a thousand dollars. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm not getting it. <laughs> this is fabulous new marketing plan. Fantastic. Rock and rolled <laughs> to your rock photography. Love from Ghana. Hey, what makes photography more creative? Oh gosh. Ooh, what a question. Can you guys answer that in the chat? What makes photography more creative? Hmm. If I was going to answer that in the line of work that I do, I would say what makes my photography more creative is pulling genuine connective emotions from my couples. But that I feel like you could have a podcast debate on. <laughs> it's a really good question. Uh, Jeffrey meets, what do you think of the flashpoint system? I've had some variation while using Godox 300 pro. Uh, so Godox and flashpoint, they're the same, same thing, right? Um, it's Flashpoint is Adorama's brand. You know, they can be great lights when you're just starting out, but what you noticed is exactly why people pay, one of the reasons why people pay more for pro photo lights. I once did, what was it, 1200 headshots in the course of three days. And if I did not have pro photos consistency in every flash, not turning a little bit magenta, we're not going a little bit blue or warm, there's color consistency in those lights. I would have been stuck in editing hell for like three months afterwards. Um, and that's what I was talking about. A lot of times when you have flashes that are less expensive, as the flash warms up, the color temperature changes. And then you've got a little bit of a nightmare on your hands. Um, so that's a big consideration. Now, if you're not taking a lot of shots over and over again, then maybe that's not something that's going to bother you that much. Uh, but definitely something that bothered me, uh, would have bothered me with 1200 headshots. <laughs> that would have been horrible. Uh, can you suggest, Jeffrey asked again, can you suggest a profile, a color profile for Lightroom Capture One based on an EOS R camera? So I keep my profile at standard. Um, normally I'm at it. Uh, no, I take that back. Normally I'm adding JPEG photos actually. So I keep it on standard. Um, and other than that, I am editing raw files. If you want to know why I'm normally editing JPEG files, just look up uh, how I do same day edits. Uh, I edit on my phone a lot, uh, just straight from the Canon EO system. And I get the photos on my phone and then let my clients see them the night of the wedding. So I edit those in JPEGs because they're small and faster. 
but um, yeah, I just set them standard and I'm pretty good with that. Uh, are you teaching a workshop at Imaging USA in January? Well, I applied, I hope they accept me. <laughs> That's what I know. Oh, I love that answer, Nathan. Do something beyond mundane. That's how you get more creative photos. Good. I think I caught up, guys. Finally, have you ever lost your passion for photography? And if so, have you, how'd you bring it back? Yes, we all face that burnout, right, guys? Um, we all, why am I still sharing my screen? Uh, we all face that photography burnout. And uh, I equate it a little bit to love. Uh, we all fall out of love. And we all fall in love. And the way that I've got myself out of burnout is by finding something new to fall in love with. So about 10 years ago, 12 years ago, I guess now that was flash photography, falling in love with flash photography. More recently, maybe about four years ago when I was hitting some burnout, it was all about me falling in love with my clients and I would get to know them more personally, not in a creepy way, I'm not a creep, um, but I would just be more invested in who they were as people and as a couple. And I found that really helped me fall in love with photography again and be burnt out. So just find something new to fall in love with. Pick whatever it is. <laughs> Nathan, what do you bring out? What do you bring out of the flash in your outdoor shoots? So outdoors, let me pull up the lighting guide. Uh, if you guys are just joining us, we're talking about this lighting guide that I just launched. So you keep seeing me bring it up because we launched it today. You can grab it. Uh, more details in the YouTube description link. You have to hide the live chat in order to get to that description. But let's go to off camera flash basics. And let's go to outdoor flash. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And see what we got right there. I do have an extra. Let's get the audio off of here. How do I pack for a wedding? So you can actually, you realize this literally brought you, you said, what do I bring with an outdoor flash? It literally brought us to the very minute and second where I'm giving you the list of what I am bringing with my outdoor flash, which is exactly what that was <laughs> with the D10. Uh, I'm going to go into the transcript rather than try to see what I just did, try to scroll through the video and you never can find what you need when you do that. But I'm going to scroll through the transcript. There it is. Light stands, diffusers, and umbrellas. This is exactly what I bring. They see right there, Pro Photo Beauty Dish. You can click and it brings you right to that part of the video, right? Pro Photo Beauty Dish, yep, bring that. Scroll, 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 what else do I bring? Uh, the Beauty Dish Speed Ring, there it is. We've got a list here, B1s. Yep, so that's, that's pretty much what I bring. The light stands and then my umbrella. So that's what I'm bringing when it's really outdoors or indoors, utilizing everything back and forth. And Jared Poland did not approve this message. Yeah, he, don't, don't like, get me started. <laughs> All right, oh, I need a drink for a second. Thank you so much, Jay Cook. I appreciate that. Both things, only creepy people say they aren't creepy. Very true, very true. Oh, when, when do I bring it up? Did I totally misread you? Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, Nathan. When do I bring it out? Well, I bring it out in situations where I need light. You know, sometimes I'm gonna go to my guide because I know I got stuff in here. This is one of my favorite ways to use off-camera flash here uh, is by faking golden hour. So if you don't know what I mean by golden hour glow, let me take the closed captioning off so you can see a little bit better. These are some of my favorite ways to use off-camera flash is making it look like natural light, but it's enhancing it, giving the photo more depth, more mood, more color, more light. That's exactly these photos right here are exactly when I bring it out outside, you know, when I just want a little bit more control, a little bit more dynamic from there. Um, EC Sanka, wow, at last I see you live. I admire your work and kindness. Your tutorials are great. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. This is me live. I do have to cook dinner in about 10 minutes. Uh, so if you don't mind, for those of you who are popping on, uh, I haven't even looked. Oh, 76 of you in the room. Guys, thank you for being here. Um, I'm just going to really quickly show you what we're talking about today, why you've seen me talk about flash photography all stinking day long. I'm not gonna lie, my jaws hurt. I'm a little bit dry mouth right now. I'm really excited to have a glass of wine. Um, 
tonight at dinner before an awesome wedding tomorrow that I've been looking forward to for so long. All right, so we've created these guides and I say we, it's my content, but it's also teamed up with a company called Retrieve that create the most amazing educational tech out there. This is like nothing you've ever seen before. I apologize if you heard this spiel in the very beginning, but I'm gonna do it one more time uh, before I answer any last questions that you have about flash photography. What we've created here are three guys, I'm so distracted, is beef for dinner. I don't know what I'm making for dinner. Rice, oh, you know what I'm making? I'm making kitchen, kitchen, I would call it kitchen sink dinner. I take everything that I can find in the fridge that I need to get rid of uh, and I put it all together with some rice and adobo and we're good. Okay, back to the guides. So what we've done is we've created three lighting guides and these are like nothing you've ever seen before. There's a total of seven hours of content in here and that's well and good. But if you're anything like me, when you see that value add, oh, there's 14 hours of content in here. I'm thinking that's really wonderful. I love 14 hours of content. I get that. But dear, I have a job, I'm a working photographer. I don't have time to sit here for 14 hours to find the little thing that I need. That's what these guides do. You're gonna wish every course you ever bought on photography was like this. These guides, you click in them. What haven't we clicked in lately? And of course you have your list of the guide and everything that's included. And you, know, you can go through there, but you've got searchable features. So if I go here and I say, what are, gels. It's going to not only pop up, by the way, there's videos in here, but there's also articles. There's written articles in here as well. It's not only going to pop up where I'm using gels. Did you see what that just did there? Hold on. I was talking. We said gels and it popped into the very second right there. That's where it popped in where I'm holding gels and putting them on my flash. So it's so searchable. It gets you right down to the second of the video that you want to learn about. All the knowledge in the world is fantastic, but it's completely useless if you can't watch it all. Here you can watch exactly what you need because it searches right to there. And then on top of it, you've got a transcript here. So you can scroll through and oh yeah, gels, color temperature. Yeah, let me click on that. And now we're getting to the part where I'm talking about color temperature. And of course I'm speaking English because I speak English, but you can go to closed captioning. We've got English, Spanish, and Portuguese here. And you can also translate the audio into Spanish and Portuguese. And it's in English because I'm talking. All right, so you can just click here and it's going to reload it really fast. And then you will hear me speaking. Oops, there we go. Hear me Todo este cabello alrededor de este lado porque se decidió realmente. Oh, I Exagerando en realidad algo así como cómo lo estás haciendo solo finge. Como si es tú. Furthermore, when you scroll down, if there's anything in this video like this posing inspiration guide that I know a lot of you have, it's right here and you can download it. And then we've got all these related results. Oh, cool. That was nice. That was an orange gel. I want to look at using a lavender gel. Now I'll click on that and it's right here scrolled in right to where I start using these gels. And I know we're moving it over. You'll start to see photos here. And again, you can go right to the transcript. We'll throw some lavender on there. Yep, there I am putting the lavender gel on my light. Crazy. Oh, Nathan, thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate it. Love that you're here. So this is what we've got. In addition to this, in addition to the translations, audio, closed captioning, searchability, obviously all the actual content that's in there because there is seven hours of content between all three of these guides, you have the upgraded direct messaging feature. Not only can you send me a message directly that I will personally get, I put it not only on the home screen, um, I put it on the uh, very beginning. I'm not showing you my phone. Very beginning. Um, I will see that before I see Instagram DMs, which by the way, there are about a thousand unread Instagram DMs. I cannot keep up with it. It is humanly impossible. But this I'm going to get to because it is a premium. You can send me a question. You can send me a video. You can send me a photo and I can respond to you with a video, with an audio file, with a text. It's so much more interactive. It is so much fun. I'm so excited to connect with all of you here. So we already sold past the 100 of them. We did have a three bundle deal for the first 100, but we blew past that one. Um, and now we have another bundle deer, deer. Oh, it's the end of the day. We do have another bundle deer, deal. No, no, it's the end. 
it's the end, guys. All right, so you can buy any one of these lighting guides for $9.99, but if you get all three, you're getting a discount here and it's only $24.99 for all three, seven hours of searchable content plus direct messaging to me as an upgrade. Um, you're just gonna love this. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's in the link below. You can also find a million stories on it on Instagram. If you want to look at it that way, got some swipe ups, you can link in bio there. You can check out the promo video that I had that I released this morning, all that it show you more details. Whew, it's been a day. It's been a day. <laughs> all my energy is for you. <laughs> Jack says so far, my college calculus has been useful. You won't need it in my videos, though. I speak Spanish too, but notice your voice is very deep when you translated to that demo just now. Okay, yeah, no, it's not actually me speaking. Uh, I do speak some Spanish, but um, not as well to translate my own stuff. Wonderful. I'm having shrimp rice with a glass of wine. Ooh, doing white. Are you doing a Sauvignon Blanc with that, Pat? I would do a Sauvignon Blanc with some shrimp and rice. That's what I would do right now. Little Boots, not related. Have you had any issues traveling with your gear? I've had many where my strobes modifiers get checked and oh God, oh, I certainly have. Um, usually it was um, because of some real jerks in TSA more than anything else that they were just looking to give me a hard time. But the best thing I do, everything I need, everything expensive comes with me, uh, which includes lithium batteries because you can't check them anyway. That is on my back. And then uh, anything, the non-essentials, like maybe my extra lens if I can't fit it, but usually everything's got to be carry on. I carry on, I don't check like ever, ever. Um, but depending where you are in the country, if they're weighing your bag, um, not country, the world, if they're weighing your carry on bag, that becomes a problem. So you got to go with just the lightest stuff that you can bring, strobes, things like that, or you end up checking it uh, and hope you have good equipment insurance. <laughs> okay, uh, Jack. Oh, I read yours, wonderful. Got the bundle, yay, MJ, thank you so much. And Pat, you have my book, yay. That's literally the perfect compliment is my off-camera flash handbook with the 32 scenarios for creating beautiful and stunning photographs. I think that's the, uh, the tagline that we have there. I am gonna go in a minute because I am reaching the end of my energy that I'm giving all of you guys. Uh, Country Kilo learned a lot from you, just an amateur using Canon M50. Love that camera. I use the Canon M50 all the stinking time. It's awesome. I will enjoy my dinner. Yeah, the TSA. Here's the story. I'm just going to tell you the story because now I'm mad about it all over again, like 12 years later. My contents of my bag were perfectly within uh, regulation, didn't have to weigh them, but they basically just saw me with a big bag. By the way, let my friend who was right in front of me go right through with her bag, but it was, um, and she had all the same stuff in her bag but it was a backpack versus I have like a rolly case because I don't feel like carrying it. <laughs> and they stopped me and it basically comes down to, and I wasn't smart enough at the time. They're like, oh, well, you can't have more than eight batteries. And at the time I had um, the Canon 580 EX and I had eight batteries. Oh, because I had the, the battery pack that went on too. So I think I probably had like 20 AA batteries. I'm like, oh no, that's not allowed. And they basically were like, you have to check this bag. You have to check this bag. So they made me check the bag. And in my head later, I'm like, why didn't I just throw out the batteries? I don't care if they were rechargeables or what I should have done. The batteries were even in a little battery pack. I should have said here, fine, check those. <laughs> my little, little one thing. <laughs> Is there a minimum size to a check bag? I don't know. Uh, anyway, that was my experience. Thankfully, nothing broke, nothing got stolen. I was really lucky. I won't say what country that was from, but they were jerks. It was from a country not going to there. All right. Question, Chris, question, okay. I'll wait for Chris's question, but um, thank you guys so much for joining me. Thank you for letting me talk to you about these bundles. Uh, it's always a fine line between, I wanna talk to you about these cool things that I have, uh, you know, and put the food on my table that I'm feeding my children with and cooking in a few minutes uh, and just wanting to give information and give of myself and that fine line between it all. So thank you so much for letting me talk to you about all these things that I'm excited about. And I hope you're excited about them because this is new tech. I'm pretty sure I'm the first person in the photo world to have this kind of tech attached to my photo education. And I am thrilled. Uh, everyone else will steal it from here. You just remember where you saw first. <laughs> um, Jose, hopefully one of these years will be a conference so you, 
you get the book signed. Yes, I would absolutely be honored to sign your book. Oh, I'll blush probably. I'm going to start blushing now. I'm going to start getting red. Uh, Chris, what flash to trigger flash? Um, so I'm assuming you're, you know, how do you trigger an off camera flash? And you have to have a trigger that works with the flash. So sometimes that could be like the Canon 600 EX2, that flash on your camera will trigger another Canon 600 EX2 off camera. Um, the EL1, the Profoto A1X, A1, A10, uh, those will, all the Profoto ones will not only trigger other Profoto stuff, but they'll trigger like Profoto B10, B2, B1. So they all talk to each other, usually within the same brand family. And then of course they have triggers that just aren't flashes, but I do recommend just always going, you know, I know there's third party ones always go with the proprietary. It's going to give you the least amount of problems. And then you won't want to throw the thing against the wall that you spent the money on. <laughs> the only ones that are uh, interchangeable, uh, probably not the only ones, but the ones that I know of most popular are the Godox and the Flash Points uh, because they are technically the same brand, same manufacturer, just different labels. So they will all work off of each other. Uh, travel with the 604 IS2 and the RF 100 to 500. And security is almost the biggest concern. Yeah, it is. It is a big, big concern. Uh, so Chris, you're using a Canon T7i uh, and you own the Canon 340EX. I'm not entirely sure. You also have to make sure the flash that you have does have an optical or infrared uh, capability built into it. I'm not familiar with that one. I'm familiar with like the 70EX AI. Um, that one I know you can trigger optically with, um, uh, I was triggering, well, you'll find out on Tuesday what I was triggering that out with if you check out my YouTube video, which is the next one on the photography, budget photography shootout gear war. So I'll let you guys do that. And I will see you guys later. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm excited to talk to you all in these guides, have actual conversations with you. And um, I'm happy that you are here face to face with me, sort of. Thank you guys so much. Uh, thank you so much, Emily. Really appreciate that. And Nathan would love to see these features in the speed posing program. Yeah, we should get on that. I'll tell them that next. <laughs> All right, guys, where do I click to end stream? We'll go in here. We've got like six things up in here. All right, see y'all later. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'm going to cook dinner and shoot a killer wedding tomorrow. Bye.